Alrighty, welcome back everyone, it's Garland here bringing you another Neverwinter video. Uh, and today we're going to be doing a mini tutorial on the Mod 11 campaign, uh, The Cloaked Ascendancy. Uh, now up until this point I've never had to make a guide or a tutorial on any of the campaigns uh, due to the fact that pretty much all of them have been self-explanatory. Uh, in Mod 10, however, they did give us uh, choices on the dailies, however, it was just a rotation of the dailies. You really didn't have choices. Uh, Mod 11 changes that. They're introducing something new where you can actually make choices in the campaign to do certain things. Uh, and how I want to do this is break it down into three categories. Uh, you can either go for the fastest route uh, to, be un to be able to unlock Spell Plague. However, you can take another route, which is the fastest route to get the Ascendant Weapon set. Uh, and then the third route, of course, is just if you're interested in the boons. Uh, however, you are eventually going to get the boons anyway. Uh, now, the Cloaked Ascendancy is probably the biggest or the longest uh, campaign that we have received up until this point. Uh, and there is a lot of confusion with it. Uh, this will not be a, f a full tutorial. I'm not going to go in-depth on everything, uh, but I do want to clear up uh, just some uh, certain items uh, that people are apparently confused with. So if we do jump into the campaign, it will be at the very top. Uh, everyone is going to have to do uh, the first campaign task, um, the apparent. Everyone is going to have to do this, regardless of which path you decide to take. Now, the Cloaked Ascendancy, as I said, is probably going to be the longest campaign we've ever received thus far. Uh, if you do decide to do everything, uh, it's going to take about seven to eight weeks. So, yeah, it is definitely one of the longer campaigns for sure. Uh, now, if you do want to, for instance, let's talk about how to unlock Spell Plague first. Uh, if you want... Nothing to do with the Mod 11 Ascendant Weapon Set. Uh, if you're not worried about the boons right now, uh, you just want the fastest way to get the Spell Plague. Uh, it's going to basically take um, four weeks. Uh, somewhere around the four week mark is how long it's going to take to unlock Spell Plague. Uh, and all you have to do is, as I said, you do have to do the initial campaign uh, task. And then if we scroll up, uh, you have to do all three investigates. So, Gyron, Cabal, and Nestora. You have to do all three investigates. Uh, as well as all three confronts. So, you have to confront Gyron, you have to confront Cabal, and you have to confront Nestora. So, it takes a total of six tasks, plus the initial, which is seven tasks. And then, if you go all the way up, of course, you have to unlock Spell Plague as well. Uh, which does cost another 120 evidence of evil. So you're looking at, you know, four weeks of work. Uh, you can access this a little, a little sooner uh, if you know some tricks. Uh, however, the basic person is going to take uh, about four weeks to get the spell plague. Uh, now, if you're not interested in Spell Plague right, a while, right away, rather, uh, the next bracket that I want to talk about is the Mod 11 weapons, uh, the Ascendant set. Uh, if you're going purely for the weapon set, guys, uh, all you have to do, it's going to take about three weeks. Three weeks should get you the weapon set. Uh, as I mentioned before, you will have to do the initial campaign uh, task, and then you simply just want to unlock the store down here clear the docks uh and then you can do the second one however i would stay away from these two uh this halves the evidence of evil that you need to buy the weapons so you need to do the initial campaign clear the docks and if you really want to restore commerce and that's all you need to actually buy the weapons uh you can go over here to the weapons store wherever he is he's over here uh, and like I said, so all the weapons are currently here. You will have to refine them. I will be doing a separate weapon on the Ascendant set. Uh, but like I said, for right now, unfortunately, we are just doing a mini tutorial on the campaign alone. Uh, now, finally, the last bracket, of course, is going to be the boons. 
Uh, and basically for the boons, you have to do everything, guys. Uh, so you have to do all the investigates, you have to do all the confronts, and then you have to do uh, Glimpse of Madness, Heart of Fire, and the Fey Wizardry, as well as the very last one. Uh, as you can see, there are only four boons uh, in this campaign. So you get, you know, you can pick one of these, one of these, one of these, and then the final boon at the top. Uh, but that's going to wrap it up for uh, the brackets. Uh, hopefully you guys haven't messed up yet. Uh, for instance, uh, you can't have three of these done up until this date as filming this video. So if you've already in investigated Gyron, confront Gyron, and you went up to Glimpse of Madness, uh, unfortunately you've already extended your time uh, You know, based upon what you're trying to do. Uh, I wanted to get this video out there a lot sooner than I did, unfortunately, you know. We didn't have that option, so this video is coming out now. Uh, hopefully, it does help you. Um, very quickly, I also want to talk about the weekly and the dailies. Uh, the dailies are right here, of course. Uh, so, the Mer the Mercertile missions, uh, is you're going to get 25 evidence of evil a day, guys. Uh, just for the daily. And then you can have options on based on what you want to do. I always go for the first one, the departed, uh, which basically means you just have to go into a dig site, uh, into a crypt, and loot the um, objective. Uh, however, there is different options here. So the magic recovery, you have to go into a dungeon. Uh, the heirloom weapons, you have to go into a sewer. Family heirlooms, uh, you have to run around and look for the heirlooms in the map. And then secure the area is basically just go and kill all the areas in a designated area. Uh, now, why do I always take the first one? Uh, because it's the first one in the list. Uh, the fastest way to do your daily is going to be dig sites, heroics. Uh, so you might as well just pick up one of these ones. Uh, now, you can bring up the map and kind of look and see to make sure uh, there is, you know, a crypt available. So there's a crypt right here right off the bat. Uh, another crypt. Uh, a sewer. In a dungeon. Uh, each dig site can be one of the three, guys, uh, if it's not claimed. So this one right here is not claimed, uh, and if you buy a map from the store, you can actually claim this to make it whatever, which, you know, whatever one you want, to make it either a sewer, a dungeon, or a crypt. Uh, but for the most part, most of the River District maps are very active, so as you can see, all the guard towers are already, you know, fully buffed up, and uh, all the dig sites, for the most part, are already claimed. Uh, so if you are going to take the daily, like I said, uh, I always take the first one. Uh, now, if we look on the right hand of my screen, uh, this is what I mean by options. Uh, you have to get 100% to finish the Mercertile Mission quest. Uh, now, dig sites and heroics are both going to give you 20% each. That's why I always just go and do dig sites. So if you do 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, that's 80% with four dig sites, obviously. And then if you come out down here and do a heroic, the small heroics are going to be worth 10%, and the major heroics are worth another 20%. Uh, so you can simply just do five dig sites if you choose. Uh, however, if you want to do heroics, you can. Uh, that's the fastest way to do it. Um, unfortunately, you can do the other ways if you really want. Like, if you're in the mood to do something else, uh, you can come up here to the shipmaster, which he isn't on the map, but he's right here. Uh, and if you want to donate resources to the shipmaster, that will also increase your mission percentile. Now, if we do another question that was brought up here, uh, if you scroll over to your map feature where it says Far Realm Ritual is at 72% and the treasure ship is 0%. So, as I mentioned before, if we do take a look at the map again, if you donate resources to this NPC that's right about here, uh, he will spawn a heroic encounter, the treasure ship encounter. Um, and a lot of people farm this for the materials. Uh, all the materials you're going to be getting throughout the zone. So, you know, the reclaimed weapons, the reclaimed magic, and the reclaimed witches are all uh, currency. Like I said, we're not doing a full tutorial, guys. I just want to answer some basic questions about the overall campaign. So that does cover the daily and what you should do. Now, this NPC over here does have the weekly. However, I've already done the weekly today. Uh, you will get another 20 evidence of evil for the weekly. Uh, now, the question is, is 
how do I unlock the weekly? The weekly. Uh, to unlock the weekly, you just have to complete one of the confront uh, campaign tasks. So either confront Gyron, confront Cabal, or confront Nestoria, and that will actually unlock the weekly for you. Uh, another question that I had was regarding these things at the top of the screen. Uh, now, once you unlock the weekly, you will get a carved box out of both of these. Um, now, the carved box, you can store these. Uh, you, you basically get a portal stone out of the box. Uh, and you need one portal stone for the weekly. So, to increase this top part here you have to do certain tasks i believe for secure the district it involves you know upgrading guard towers um doing dig sites i believe will raise this uh, i'm not 100 percent sure on that but doing tasks within the map will raise this and once you get to 100 uh you have to make sure you're claiming it because if you do more tasks while it's already maxed at 100 it does not accumulate you have to make sure you do take these and get them done uh, resist the rituals on the other hand uh, when you're doing a heroic you have the opportunity to use 10 of the currency to extend the heroic timer uh, and you can simply just sit there and farm it non-stop if you have the currency and like i said remember to be taking these so chances are i'm going to be getting this one today uh, which i will get another ornate box uh, just keep in mind these only stack to about five uh, you can farm the portal stones non-stop if you so choose. Uh, more info with that will be in the uh, Ascendant Weapon Guide because that's more along the lines of farming materials for the Mod 11 set. But that's going to wrap it up for the most part, guys. Uh, hopefully, uh, you're getting more attuned to the Mod 11 campaign. Uh, like I said, there was a lot of confusion when it initially launched. No one had any idea what to do, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, like I said, I did want to get this video out there a lot sooner than I did. Uh, however, hopefully this still helps some people. Like I said, it was not a full tutorial, as there are other aspects that you may or may not get, you know, you may or may not need help with. Uh, however, this mini tutorial should break, you know, break down the basics of at least what route you need to take and which brackets you need to unlock for the certain items that you're going for. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, like I said, hopefully it did help you. Uh, if you have additional questions, as always, be sure to leave a comment below. Uh, the next video, uh, as far as the Mod 11 stuff goes, uh, we're going to be doing the guide for the Mod 11 weapons. Uh, so if you are going for the weapons and you still need advice or help, uh, that video will be coming out soon as well. But that's going to wrap it up for this mini tutorial for the campaign for Mod 11, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.